Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2, where last episode we built our extreme reactor here. This thing is producing us over 3.5 million RF a tick, but most importantly we get the cyanide byproduct out of this thing, which allows us to create the plutonium ingots, which we're then distilling down with some corrosive well crystals to create growth infusion, and then fluid transpose into crop sticks. Just at the end of last episode, we also started work on our mystical agriculture farm, which I've been working on actually between episodes. And this is what we've got so far. So right now I'm just in the process of trying to level up our crop stats. We can see here that these are already at 30, which is the max stats. This is basically an addition of each of the three stats on the crop. So there's strength, gain and growth. Looks like this one has already reached 10, 10, 10. Unfortunately, we don't get access to the seed analyzer before we do astral sorcery. However, we can see here in the tooltip, it does actually show the stats. It's a little harder to read though, but they are there. So yeah, these slime ones are at 30, so they're ready to be planted. So I think we'll put the slime in this one here. It's very, very quick to grow. Yeah, we also need to filter the range collector here. But yeah, you can see just how quick this thing is. <laughs> and we get so much essence per harvest too. So yeah, let me show you how all of this farm setup is going to work. Right now we have iron and gold leveled to 10, 10, 10. And these two that are marked with the glowstone still have to be leveled. I just wanted to get these, these things planted. So these ones are still the 1, 1, 1 stats. But yeah, starting with the item collection, we're just using ranged collectors. And these are connected to item laser relays, which snake all the way around the chunk. And then output into an item interface from actually additions. And then using integrated dynamics, we import to the controller slave here. Or in the case of the middle chunk, the drawer controller. And that will be stored in the essence output drawers, which are all max upgraded and have the void upgrade. Make sure we have the void upgrade in there. We don't want any like millions of entities on the floor and crash in the server. But the blocks underneath the range collectors are hydrators, which speed up the crop growth. And we're running double energy upgrades, um, a range add-on of five, and a speed upgrade of one. And these things do stack as well. So yeah, you can see the range on just one of these. And we have nine per chunk right now. I may add more in these other corners just to speed it up even more, but <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of clicking to get all these configured. Underneath, we just have conduits and power cells to power the hydrators with RF. And then we're also running a feral flare lantern just to keep things lit up. But yeah, as for the collection of the items, or the harvesting of the crops rather, we're using integrated tunnels uh, player simulators. Actually, maybe it's easier if I show you on the middle one here. We have a drawer here just with the Horn of the Wild from Batania. And the Horn of the Wild, when you right click, will harvest all the crops in a range. I think it's around 17 by 17. I could be wrong about that range. But yeah, all you have to do to get this set up is have some sort of inventory with an item interface. And then inside the player simulator, you just have to have a variable card set to Horn of the Wild and click item. And this will basically player simulate as if you're clicking the Horn of the Wild, which is the fastest way that you can harvest these crops, I believe, in this pack. It's pretty much instant as soon as these, these things grow. Much, much faster than the farming station. And to hook up the rest of the chunks here, we're using omnidirectional connectors, which is basically just a wireless plug from here onto here. So this allows this player simulator and all the other ones on with the omnidirectional connector to read the contents of this drawer with the Horn of the Wild and then activate it in this chunk, which basically just extends the range of the horn. So yeah, this is going to be our mystical agriculture setup going forward. I've got a lot more seed crafting still to do and leveling as well. In fact, let's just get the next one going. I would like to get dye seeds as the next one. So all we have to do is put this in the first crop stick. This is going to grow and mutate and eventually we'll get the 10, 10, 10 stats. Yeah, already you can see these things getting planted. And from doing the other ones, it takes around 40 minutes maybe to get 10, 10, 10 stats. So it's actually, it's going to be a long time to get all of these seeds. And in fact, I may end up building more of these setups, multiple of these things. But yeah, the reason I wanted to get the dye seeds is to make easier pink slime. And I'm quite aware of our pink slime supplies actually running quite low here. We're only on 125. And um, basically ever since we rebuilt our mob farm, we didn't reintroduce the pink slime in there. But now that we have access to seeds, we can just craft this thing. Slime essence and pink dye. But that brings us on to the next question, which is how we're going to turn these essences into the raw materials. So some of them like obsidian essence only have the one craft, basically the essence to the obsidian. So I think we'll just set up crafters to craft all of the obsidian essence into obsidian blocks. However, if we look at something like Ice Essence, this can give us a few different materials actually. And there's a few which combine the essences together into Aerogel. So I'm still trying to decide what the best way to handle this is. I think an Applied Energistic Subnet is going to be the, our best option for this. But I'm not sure if we should do it in the Void or in the Overworld.
But before we do that, I have taken some time, <laughs> and when I say some time, I mean actually quite a lot of time. So we now have all of the tier 1, 2 and 3 seeds. Many of them are still leveling though, all the ones with the glowstone are of course still 1, 1, 1. So in fact there's only a few that have leveled. Currently we're working on steel seeds. The very last one, fluke seeds, just finished up. So basically the way I've been ordering them is I have most of the metals in the middle sections. Over here we have the tier 1 and 2 seeds. And over on the right hand side here we have a lot of the lower tier essences, such as rabbit. I mean there's really no reason to farm rabbit essence, other than for the quest. Uh, but we also have things like cow, sheep, chicken, uh, there's sulfur down there, dye essence. And then yeah, over on this side we have the slightly higher tier ones, the blaze, blitz, basols. And uh, we've got quartz and certus quartz here. I think I'm going to put the flukes on this top layer here. Maybe we'll put it here behind solarium. So yeah, to add a seed we just plant it, <laughs> collect the first essence, and add it to the ranged collectors. Which luckily actually are in ranged for that second layer up there. And I have tested this quite a bit, just to make sure there's no items going to be on the ground. But it does get picked up no matter where it falls here, which is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not sure how many more of these plots that we need. But currently, as we have it here, we have space for 96 different seeds. Although to be fair, most of them are actually planted here. But yeah, even with the tier 1 seeds, we still get thousands and thousands of essences. <laughs> it's so good. But yeah, now we have to work on a way to convert these essences. Oh, and I did also decide to separate out these drawer networks. So these two left-hand fields are for this drawer network, which will extend around this way. And then I've replaced the controller slaves with drawer controllers. And I've also hooked up storage buses to our main net over here. And it's the same situation on this side as well. And also all of the essences correspond to their location in the farm. So if we're looking at the drawer network this way, top left field over there is the blitz, then the blaze, then the guardian. And same thing here, we have redstone alloy in the first plot, then platinum, then nothing in the third slot, glowstone ingots is in the fourth, and so on. So that way it makes it easy to locate where the seeds are planted, and just generally helps keep track of things. But yeah, I've been having a blast setting this up. <laughs> it's very monotonous, but I love stuff like this. But um, yeah, let's work on the way to craft down these essences into their base materials. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is to go maybe down around eight or nine blocks. And we'll use this line between the two chunks to separate out our subnet. So everything on the right hand side is going to be on the subnet and everything on the left is going to be connected to our main network. There, so now we have a space to work in. Okay, so we need to be able to have access to these drawers. And instead of just running item conduits from the drawer controller there, I think instead we're going to run some controller slaves underneath the three different drawer networks. And we'll attach a second storage bus to these controller slaves not connected to our main network. And in fact, you know what? To make it a little bit easier, we're going to use coloured cable here for the first time. <laughs> oh wait, this shouldn't be connected. And this way, all the blue cable will be for the void subnet, and all the regular cable will belong to our main network. There, so since the subnet is going to be relatively large, we will need a few ME controllers to power this. Power cell for power, and we'll make sure to put the power cell card inside. Set this to output, and then we can con connect up our blue cable here. Actually, let's flip this controller up. We'll make it a vertical controller instead. So now I think we'll have some interfaces, and this way we can request items that are connected to the storage bus. So for example, we want to craft down water essence into clay, and also water buckets. So we can request this in the interface. Now let's set the ME interface on top of this smart cable instead. Then we'll leave a space. Then we'll place a crafter, and a drawer below this. Yeah, I think this design could work. And then we just have to repeat for all of the essences, basically. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of tier 1 crafters. And then as for things like water essence, which has two different crafts, we can stack these on top of each other. So this drawer here will be for the water buckets, and this one here will be for the clay. And we can just craft it using the one crafter. And if needs be, we can upgrade these as well, since these tier 1s can only hold two different recipes. And then we can power these with some conduit on the back and then some item conduit to transfer all of the items. And then I think we'll place a drawer controller in the centre of the chunk, and this will connect to the bottom drawer network. And then we can separate it out and have a separate drawer network here, and two more storage buses. So then the other problem we have here now is, we obviously want to be able to read these output contents back at our main base. And since we want to keep these chunks separate with the subnet, what we can actually do here is have an ME interface, and we'll place a storage bus on this. 
and then connect this up to our main network. We will also configure the storage bus to extract only so that our main network can read the contents of this ME interface which is connected to the subnet. And so now just to test this out, if we put a ring of magnetization in here, we should see it show up in our main network. Yeah, there we go. It took a little while, but <laughs> it's in there and we can extract from this. There's a little bit of lag with the server here, but maybe just as the update. Wait, did that duplicate the item? No, it is, it is gone from the drawers. Yeah, now it's gone from the from the terminal. All right, so since there's so many seeds, where do we even start with this thing? <laughs> um, should we just start with the tier ones here? So like with wood essence, what do we need from wood essence? So from wood essence, we can craft each of the vanilla types of wood. I think we're only gonna be interested in the dark oak wood, but we can also craft saplings with this if we add some nature essence. Yeah, here in the witch's oven, we use acacia saplings for acacia resin. And I think it's the same situation with jungle saplings. Actually, you know what? It doesn't really make sense to have the wood essence over here when it's planted in that quadrant there. So <laughs> let's move this setup to over this side, actually. Okay, I copied the setup on this side. Let's start by filtering in the wood essence in the interface. And we'll also ask for nature essence here. So we're going to limit the item filter, the wood essence, into the first crafter. And then I think for the saplings, we'll do a 2x2 two two drawer. And we'll use the tier 2 crafter instead. And here we'll also filter this in. There, and then lock the drawer and we have passive wood. And then we'll have one recipe for each sapling. So we need jungle, birch, and also dark oak. I think actually that's the only three saplings we need. But yeah, again, we just continue along the drawers. And this is going to be a lot of filler in it. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to make an attempt at this whole row. And then we'll come back and see if we need to make any changes to this. All right, so I've been at this for quite some time, actually, as you might imagine with all the crafters set up here. But I did manage to get all of the right hand side of the farms filtered into these first crafters here that we placed. And there's a few changes I've had to make to this, which I'll show you in a second. But we also got all of the metals um, for all of the middle field, at least all the ones that we have planted and have access to at the moment. And all of these ones I've given their own tier one crafter and put into compacting drawers so that we can have nuggets, ingots and blocks. And since we're using so few interfaces here, we're basically maxing out the slots in the, in the config interface. I have added in some extract speeds just to help with the distribution of the items among the crafters. And these conduits probably can't sustain um, exporting to all of these crafters at once. But the consumption of materials here is probably not going to be that high to where all of these crafters end up empty at once. So it should be sufficient the way we have this set up. Um, although some of this is probably overkill, maybe not for the ingots actually, but some of these other ones that we have set up is probably way overkill. <laughs> but yeah, it's fun, so why not, right? And then over on the left hand side here, I've just started filtering in all of the essences we have planted. I'm not quite finished with this one yet. But yeah, we managed to get our pink slime in here. Um, as for the dye essence, I didn't bother passive in all of the dyes. That's just very unnecessary. <laughs> Unless we run into specific cases like the pink slime, where we just buffer it in the internal slot of the crafter and then craft with the slime to give pink slime. But yeah, there's a couple of instances that I mentioned earlier on. For example, the water essence. I mentioned about this water bucket, which actually takes a, a regular bucket, which obviously can't be made with essences. And I was considering adding extra items to this setup, as in pulling from our main network to add things like buckets to craft the water buckets here. But I think instead we'll just keep these crafters isolated so that they are only crafting with the essences. And that way we don't have to import from different subnets and things. It keeps things nice and simple like this. And I also realized it's not very logical to have double storage bus on these drawer networks since we're now reading the contents of this subnet. So we can in fact get away with taking these away. And when we do that, we should still see the contents of the this drawer network in our ME system. So if we look at something like the rabbit essence, for example, we should still see that show up. Yeah, we do. So yeah, all of this cable can be removed. And that means instead of connecting to these controller slaves that we had set up before, we may as well just plug these directly into the drawer controllers that we have on all the corners. And this middle one can go, yeah, directly into the drawer controller up there. There, and that keeps things nice and clean and actually separated between the two sides. Another thing that has been modified here is we actually almost crashed the server. <laughs> Basically, the item transfer from Integrated Dynamics, believe it or not, was actually not fast enough. Especially as we have more of these seeds leveled and we're getting more output for every harvest. So I've raised up these item interfaces and added a second importer, which takes our transfer rate up to 120 items per tick per field. I think should be sufficient, right? <laughs> I mean, if not, we have a third side of this interface to add another um, importer. 
But yeah, I'll keep an eye on things just with the items on the floor, just to make sure this doesn't clog up. While I was doing all the filtering, I did also add some more hydrators to the seed level and setup. So we can actually level seeds very, very quickly now. I think we can get a seed level to 10, 10, 10 in uh, just under 15 minutes by now, which is a significant improvement. Yeah, we can already see that one's on five. Oh, we went to six. Yeah, it's only been a couple of seconds. This would have taken like at least two or three minutes to get to this point before. But yeah, right now we just have these last few items to filter into our crafters. I think I was on glowstone essence before. And I've just been doing them in order as they're planted on the fields. Again, just to keep track of things and I've left spaces in the fields that have nothing in them. So we just filter in the essence, brown channel, blue channel, add it to the interface, set the recipe on the crafter. Oh, and there, this is also a case where we have a second use for the essence, but things like this we'll do at our main base or maybe on demand for some crystals, as this does take an extra external item here that is not essence. But yeah, glowstone belongs in a compacting drawer, so we'll swap this out and then set the drawer and we're done. So yeah, I've perfected this <laughs> after doing it so many times. I can usually do about one item every 30 seconds or so, assuming all of this is set up, but some of it I've just been doing like as we need it. Oh, I already have more crafters pre-crafted. Crafting the crafters. And yeah, set the filler for nether quartz. Brown, blue, and we need a second interface. Was it here? I wanted to keep I want to keep like everything in the same spot as well. So I think I had it one block off the center, yeah. And the interface will be set to round robin, blue, and some extract speeds. Hide from the interface terminal filter in the nether quartz, and then set the recipe. Oh, and this is another case of things I'm actually not sure about. I don't think we need passive andesite, diorite, or granite. But if we do, I think that's something we'll do over on that side. Again, some things will sort of cross lines here, so to say, where we have the essence planted in that quadrant there, but we need it over here for the craft. Things like the pink slime, for example, with the dye essence. But there's not really a whole lot we can do about that. It's just something that we have to judge on a case-by-case -case basis. And then nether quartz in the compacting drawer and you get the idea so yeah i'm gonna finish the rest of these drawers and then yeah i think we're done with this for the time being this is all the seeds we have access to at the moment to get the rest we have to start astral sorcery as all of these tier 4 seeds like the diamond the emerald man the diamond's going to be very nice we're actually low on diamonds again <laughs> yeah we need the iridescent altar to craft these ones And gunpowder is the very last one we have to filter right now, which I think means that we've passived everything that we are going to need from these essences. And as you might be able to tell here, a lot of these things are also duplicates that we have other automations set up for. For example, the chorus fruit, we're farming that in our tree farm and back at our main base. Things like mineral as well, I included all four different types of the mineral outputs, as well as each of these uh, thermal rods. Um, slime is another one we already have farmed. A couple of things on this wall too. Aerogel is also something we've set up with the essences, so that means that all of this thing can be removed. And we don't have to keep this place chunk loaded anymore. And something else we can remove is actually our Grains of Infinity farm down here that we've had set up for, I don't know how many weeks now. But this setup is now irrelevant, so <laughs> let's demolish this. And you know, I did. I never did get around to finishing this room, but I guess it's not really needed now. <laughs> and overall, less entities on the floor is always a good thing. We also now technically have infinite flux crystals, which means that this setup is no longer needed. Although for things like this up here, I'm tempted actually to leave this as is. Not because we need it, but just because, I don't know, it looks kind of cool like this. And if we start ripping up this whole base, there's gonna, there's gonna be nothing left. Um, I mean, I know a lot of this stuff is also irrelevant now. These were making things like uh, silicon, which we now have seeds for, obsidian we have seeds for, um, ice we have seeds for, gravel, snow, nitre we have seeds for. We have to keep energized dark ingots, um, and I think we have to keep all of these ones too. Actually no, we have the, the rods on passive, don't we? We can pulverize those actually. But yeah, I'm not really sure what to do about systems like this, if we should completely rebuild or just leave them and turn them off. Let me know your guys' suggestions on that. Same with our farms over here. I mean, a lot of these are not needed anymore. We have essences for things like melon, sugarcane, wheat, cactus, even the mineral saplings and slime. So yeah, let me know. Should we tear down all of this farm? <laughs> or should we just leave it as is and turn them off? Well, I know that we can definitely take out this crafter here that crafts the sulfur essence into sulfur, as this is a duplicate. And we can also free up space in the interface here. And also this flint, I think. We already have the essence for flint. Yeah, we're definitely crafting this with a fire and stone essence. So this one can go as well. 
Actually, same with these saplings as well. We don't, we no longer need to craft these saplings here. And I realized earlier I did miss the spruce, which I, I did add to the crafters in the void world there. Just in case any of you <laughs> eagle-eyed among you pointed that out. I guess all of these machines are also irrelevant. Well, maybe not the atomic alloy and things, but certainly the steel and the refined obsidian and glowstone. So yeah, not really sure what we should do about all of this stuff, but um, the rubber is another one we can get rid of actually. <laughs> but yeah, leave your opinions in the comment section. So I wish we could have got a before and after of this, but look what's inside our crafted terminal now. <laughs> we have so many more resources to our name. This is so satisfying to scroll through here and see all of this stuff we've automated. And I haven't yet upgraded any of the drawers that we're crafting the essences down to. But honestly, it might not be necessary since we're, we're buffering so much of the essences. I have fully upgraded all of those drawers. But yeah, I think that's going to be enough mystical agriculture for one day. <laughs> we're still going to have to come back to that in the future for all of the rest of the seeds. But I think now we should make a start into Astral Sorcery. Astral Sorcery is al always a fun mod to go through. And I'm interested to see what sort of changes this pack brings to this mod. So yeah, I guess the first steps is to get our Luminous Crafting Table and also the Resonating Wand. So as you may have come to expect from this pack by now, this is not going to be as simple as simply dragging the items into our crafting terminal here. So to start with, the Luminous Crafting Table is going to first of all take Plutonium, which we made last episode. However, this is comprised of two materials, the Cyanite, which we have quite a lot of backlogged, and Mystical Iron, which we do have on passive. However, I didn't end up setting up the Cold Iron for passive automation. We're still just doing this on demand with the Thaumium. So let's change that and make this a passive process instead. And to do that, I've simply added a storage bus on site here. I moved the range collector from below onto the top side which takes the items and puts them inside the drawer where we have a storage bus on the back. Then we have a level emitter down here which keeps 32 cold iron in our system. And when we're below 32 cold iron, this level emitter will turn on, activate the conduit which pulls the thomium from the ME interface and places it inside the dropper where it drops it into the fire and creates our cold iron. So yeah, it's a very similar setup to some of the other things we have in the base. For example, the Fluix, this is a very similar setup to that. But all of that cold iron should be sent now to this alloy smelter which me melts our plutonium, which is actually all being taken out to make crop sticks. So I think in some way we do want to control this system. We don't want all of our plutonium being put in here as we have this buffered in a black hole tank. So this is effectively going to run forever. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to eat a lot of plutonium if we leave it like this. So one thing we can do to fix that actually is we could actually just level emit this pulverizer and set this signal to only be controlled on a high signal and then we can place a level emitter on top of this and we'll fill out the level emitter for plutonium and we'll say when we're below 64 yeah when levels are below 64 plutonium or no we want this above yeah when we when we are above 64 plutonium in our system this will use the rest and create growth infusion in fact you know what let's make this 120 i have a feeling we're going to need a lot of plutonium for astral and if we need to change it then it's e it's easy enough to change this level emitter so yeah, that should ensure that we do have some plutonium to work with. And since this drawer is limited to one stack, it will never actually reach the two stacks of plutonium. So let's make sure we put a drawer upgrade in there. But yeah, as for this divine underpowder, which we made, I think, two episodes ago from Lightning Craft, I've still not figured out what we can do about this, just because of the TPS issues. There is actually a fix that Taz implemented, which adds the recipes onto this extended crafting core. And basically, it takes this, the same inputs, only it uses the combination crafting instead of... Uh, having to deal with all of this lightning malarkey. <laughs> so I'm not sure if we should use that. Maybe let me know your suggestions and feedback on that. But I know that Taz and a couple of other guys on the Discord are using that in their games. And they said it dramatically increased the TPS. So it may be something we have to resort to. But yeah, the other thing we need for our Luminous Crafting Table is Ruined Marble. Which usually are generated in structures found in the world. However, I think those have been disabled in this pack. So we have to craft this Ruined Marble with Runes of Orb. Oh boy, this is... this. <laughs> This is a recipe. Okay, so the ender cores we have automated, I mean, they're on demand, but they're automated. The ethereal slates are partially automated, and the augmented capacities, we have recipes for these. Um, I don't think we're going to be passive in this. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary to passive this stuff, but we'll definitely want to be able to make sure we can create this on demand. So let's put in recipes for this and just let the ME system tell us what we're missing. Since we'll be using a fair amount of blood magic runes, I'm going to get these crafting again. 
Basically, most of the time we have this blood orb kept in there just to keep our life essence network filled up. But every now and again, I take that out and let these drawers fill up. This should import the Abyssal Stone from our ME interface and craft down all of the different versions of the slates. Although, as I've mentioned before, at some point, quite soon when we have access to Dark Steel Seeds, we will be adding the rest of our blood altars here so that we don't have to switch this out manually. Okay, recipes are encoded. Let's see what we're missing for Wind Marble and just how expensive this is. <laughs> I mean, look at this, for one, for four pieces of ruined marble. I mean, we have the resources for it though, including the moonstone, which is nice. We just recently got the access to the essence for this. As crafting this before with the unstable ingots was not fun. <laughs> so yeah, let's get our ruined marble. And then I think we just need some mystic ingots, which are also made in the lightning infusion table. Although we do have 32 to start off with. So with that, there is our first astral sorcery craft and the luminous crafting table. Our vision expands. <laughs> nice. Okay, so now the resonating wand, which is also going to take a little bit more infrastructure set up, mainly for these sparkling aquamarines. Oh, hang on, is the engraved marble a custom recipe as well? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> this is going to be back to our abyssal craft coins. Let's hold off on that one. Let's do the aquamarine first of all. Yeah, <laughs> this could be a bit of an issue. Um, I would have thought we'd have more than this, but I mean, I guess we don't farm it in the builder. Well, in any case, we do have to fluid transpose this with molten plutonium, which is, again, another consumer of this plutonium here. Um, so let's start off by setting this up. Okay, so this will be yet another magma crucible and fluid transposer. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering what this thing is, this is a mechanical squeezer, and we use this for crystallized chorus chunks. This is just an on-demand process. We have a pattern in here. And basically, we needed these for logic directors, which are used in the omnidirectional connectors we use in our mystical agriculture farm. So yeah, maybe not the best place for this, but <laughs> it's relatively compact as is. So yeah, we're going to filter the plutonium inside the magma crucible. And we'll limit the item filler this just so that it doesn't buffer too much. And we will also level emit this magma crucible to only run when we have more than 64 plutonium in our system. Hook up some power, and we're in business, nice. Okay, so this will be output to the bottom side, and we have to have our aquamarine in here. And just to double check, there's no other use that we want to keep aquamarine for. I think we just can make the, the seeds, which we don't have access to for a while, um, or fluid transpose with plutonium to make sparkling aquamarine. So in that case, we can just ask for it all in the interface, and we don't have to worry about level them in the fluid transposer. Nice, so this has given us our sparkling aquamarine, you can output this again to a drawer on the side, and storage bus on the drawer. Also, I do really like that colour of blue. That looks awesome with the plutonium in there. <laughs> that is nice. Alright, so sparkling aquamarine. The last part I think we need is just this engraved marble, which means we have to automate this abyssal craft coin engraving. Well, actually, I mean, should we automate it? Yeah, we need like two for the grindstone, uh, maybe one if we want to upgrade our wand, and then one for the resonating one. So yeah, let's just batch craft this one. So a couple of coins, some engraved marble, and we have our resonating wand. And one of the other essential components that we need for astral sorcery is rock crystals, which normally generate as ore underground, but again that has <laughs> been disabled in this pack. So we have to craft it with this custom recipe in the induction smelter, with stone and shattered mystical iron, which takes our mystical iron ingots, Yet another consumer of this <laughs> lightning infusion table stuff. But we have to explode this ingot and create shattered mystical iron, which we can then use for things like the chiseled marble and of course our rock crystal. So we're also using this setup for hyper diamonds, which are made in a very similar way. We have to explode industrial grade graphite dust. So I don't think it should be that difficult to implement it into this system. So long as we have at least one more channel on this line, I really hope we do. <laughs> oh, of course we don't. We're at eight channels. Okay. Uh, dense cable it is then. So it should just be a matter of hooking up a second input to this, exactly the same as we have on the other side. And we'll add a level emitter here, set this to active only with a signal, and this way it allows us to control how much of the mystical iron we explode. <laughs> so we'll also change out this drawer here. This is, oh, this is going to make a ton of explosions. <laughs> and we'll make it a two slot drawer. Let's make sure we fill this buffer so this stops. And I think the last thing to do is add mystical iron into this interface. Oh yeah, we're exploding now. <laughs> Let's add this to the ranged collector. And filter it inside the drawer. And I've set the level emitter quite low on this, just because mystical iron at the moment is quite precious. So this will only create it as we need it. So yeah, that wasn't too bad to automate this shattered mystical iron. We do now have to set up an induction smelter though, to create our rock crystal ore. 
And instead of making this wall any bigger than it needs to be, <laughs> we do now have actually a lot of irrelevant processes on here, i.e. Invar. We have seeds for this now, so I guess we can just repurpose this one. There, so after finding a way to squeeze the items into the interfaces back there, <laughs> I don't, you've probably all seen the state of this wall, but um, yeah, we managed to fit it in here. We now have the rock crystal ore. Oh, and this gives us our astral tome as well. And a trophy it looks like. Or not, an advancement. Yeah, a trophy as well. So yeah, with the rock crystal, we do want to process this down. And we could just break it with our pick here, but I think it is affected by fortune. Actually, I shouldn't have placed that down. <laughs> Let's silk touch this again. Wait, that wasn't silk touch. As you've seen, we did get three different rock crystals from that. So I'm curious how many we'll get if we send it through this system with our bound pickaxe for fortune 5. Wait, did we not get anything? Does this not work with the mechanical user? It's definitely not filtered in the ranged collector here. I did double check this, so yeah, this is only picking up our amber. Let's try it again. Ah, I guess it doesn't work. Maybe this isn't a high enough uh, mining level. Oh no, it does say on the tooltip that it is mining level obsidian. And we can break it ourselves, just not with the mechanical user. Okay. Well, I may have to do some testing and try to figure out a way to process these rock crystals, as I think we're going to be using these to generate starlight. Which is going to be another exciting step here coming up in Astral Sorcery, but I think we're going to wrap things up here for the day. I'm so happy we managed to get all of this mystical agriculture stuff up and running. And when I was switching out this Invar, I realised that we actually missed Refined Obsidian. So we don't have that crafted anywhere. Oh wait, we do have it crafted here. Yeah, I knew I added that processing pattern. We're just missing the storage bus on this drawer controller. Well, it's definitely quite likely I missed something else when I was uh, encoding all of these recipes and patterns. But I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> But um, yeah, we're going to wrap things up here. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.